you know, whoever else was involved from a, a you know, authoritarian standpoint, uh, to see the National Guard standing on those same steps when, when there was a peaceful protest, and now to see um, a terrorist attack and no National Guard, it just goes to show you where this country is, where this country has always has been, and probably where it's going to stay. You just see the privilege. You see the privilege in America. Um, and it's sad to see. Because if any of us were out there, I think it would have been tear gas, mace, uh, probably gunshots, you know? Thousands of white people can storm the Capitol and not face any sort of uh, obstruction from police. Um, but heaven forbid a 12-year-old black boy carry a toy gun in a park or a 15-year-old black boy walk home from a store with a bag of Skittles um, or a young black male run through the neighborhood on a jog. Um, heaven forbid any of those, those things happen. Welcome to First Take. You usually see the wonderful Molly Karen Rose uh, sitting in this chair. Uh, she is off for today. Uh, as a result, I'm filling in as the novice host that I am, but on this particular day, it really doesn't matter. I'm here alongside my buddy, Max Kellerman, my partner here at First Take. And obviously, Max, we saw what transpired in the nation's capital yesterday. I have a lot to say about it. We're gonna have Kendrick Perkins on in just a little while to react to what the NBA players had to say as well. But witnessing what you witnessed take place in the nation's capital yesterday, with those, when those protesters stormed the nation's capital, the state capital, endangering the lives of so many people. One person was, four people was killed, I'm sorry. One person was shot, the other three uh, were fatally wounded via medical emergencies and what have you. Max Kellerman, your reaction to what you saw yesterday, not just in terms of what happened, but in regards to what the NBA community had to say in their reaction to what happened. Sure, well first I would say, I wouldn't call them protesters, I called them insurrectionists, which is what they were. And um, you know, one was flying a Confederate flag, a, fl a seditious and treasonous flag of slavery inside the Capitol building. That's what happened. And of course, the world, not just in this country, the world is shocked and outraged. Um, let me say this. The reaction you heard from many in the NBA, many around the sports world, centers on the reaction of law enforcement. And if we think, if we go back to <clears throat> Colin Kaepernick's original protest, um, was this four years ago now? You go back to that, what was it specifically about? Police interactions, law enforcement interactions with communities of color, and more broadly, about systemic racism and social injustice. And what we hear time and again now, the commentary, especially from athletes, and we just heard a few of them, and including coaches, white and black, what you heard is, imagine if those people would have been black if it's African Americans largely who tried to storm the state capitol building violently and, and would they have ever breached security? Highly unlikely and I brought this point up Stephen A months and months ago because the same thing happened at state capitals. Armed insurrectionists stormed the state capitol building and were either let in or overwhelmed law enforcement and largely got away with it. And I brought it up then. What was Kaepernick talking about? How would that have gone down were they African American? It would have gone down very differently. And if you take a step back and look at what's going on, of course it's extremely disturbing to see a Confederate flag being waved around in the state capitol building. Um, on the other hand, that is a symbolic victory for the person who pulled that off. Because the reality is, you can't do that. The reality is there are repercussions. The reality is we, that this moment was coming of reckoning was coming in American history. I remember as a kid, Stephen, I was eight years old at PS 41, 1981. We used to get things, something called the weekly reader. And we would learn about how the climate's gonna change and also the browning of America. At what point would white people cease to be the majority in America and would be only the plurality, meaning they're still the largest group, <clears throat> but not over 50, <clears throat> excuse me, 50% of the population. 
And in terms of birth rates, mm-hmm. babies being born, that was right about now, which is happening right about now. And the next 30, 35 years, white people will cease to be a majority, period, as, the, as part of the population. What was going to happen to the strain of white supremacy in this country when that occurred? What we're seeing now, a desperate attempt to hold on or reclaim some kind of past power. At our worst, this country has always been about white supremacy, at our worst. And at our best, it's been a multiracial coalition of those of goodwill. And that's been the struggle throughout our history. And recent events have seen the ascension once again of the multiracial coalition of those of goodwill And what we've seen is that strain of white supremacy mixed, by the way, and it's a toxic mixture of that on the one hand and and low Mm -hmm. and and people susceptible to low quality information. So they're susceptible to lies from their leaders. We saw that toxic mix rear its ugly head in the face of a triumph by the multiracial coalition of of those of goodwill. Obviously, I have a lot to say, but sitting in this chair today and uh, uh, subbing for Molly Kieran Rose, uh, I'm going to go to Kendrick Perkins first. I want to bring him in on this conversation because obviously the NBA community reacted to it. He's a former NBA player, former NBA champion, obviously, and now a contributor right here, proudly so, on ESPN. Kendrick, you saw what you saw in the nation's capital. You saw the NBA community react uh, so four people being killed, three via medical emergency, one was shot and killed, 50 people plus were arrested, uh, and obviously they're expecting more to come. You heard the reaction from the NBA community in light of what transpired. What was your reaction? Well, well, first of all, you know, I always want to applaud the NBA Brotherhood for, for standing on the front line and doing whatever they can to use their platform to bring awareness to what's going on. Um, I, and me, honestly, personally, I don't see how they played last night. Uh, my mind was in a whirlwind uh, just watching, you know, the news and seeing what was going on and, and me witnessing what was going on in Capitol Hill. And, and the truth of the matter is, is this, Stephen A. and Max, is that we live in two different Americas. It's two Americas. It's black America and it's white America. And, and, and when you look at what happened and what transpired, last yesterday at Capitol Hill, them going in there, riding, uh, you know, uh, uh, people being murdered and killed and, and, and you know, uh, things that were getting torn down and people were taking selfies while they was doing it with, with the police officers. It, it goes back to what I said, you know, when we first addressed this situation with George Floyd, you know, a, a, a couple of months ago, is that we don't trust the system. And how can you trust the system after watching what we witnessed yesterday? I don't trust nobody. I don't trust security. I don't trust police officers. I don't trust nobody as an African American. And it goes to show me another thing is that our safety was already on the line. It don't matter who you are in the world today. If they could get to the if they could get to Capitol Hill. How can you feel safe in your own home? How can you feel safe anywhere? How can you feel safe in the NBA arena? You can't. It was a planned attack. And so what that goes to show me is that this is just the beginning. Because I don't know what else is is, is coming up. And for this to happen with the security that the Capitol have, you just don't know what's going to come up in the near future. You don't know what's going on through these evil souls that are that are doing these crazy things in our world today, especially in the United States. Our safety is on the line. We should not take nothing for granted. We have to make sure that we watch ourselves, protect ourselves, protect our family, be cautious of where we go, who we're around. And it, it, it went a step further just witnessing what we saw yesterday and the thing for words, to be honest with you, because... Yep. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm up all well, let- night pacing the house, going to check on my kids. I, I mean, you know, Stephen A to, and Max, to be honest, I don't know what to do. Hey, can't trust I, nobody. I, nobody. I, I got it. I appreciate your comments from both of you. I got a lot to say about this because I, I want to brace everybody because it's not really sports related to me. And 
let me be very, very clear. My eyes are on one individual. And that is the man that occupies the White House. His name is President Donald Trump. He was responsible for this. I don't give a damn what anybody says. And I'm not talking politics just for the world out there to recognize. I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm not talking about conservative policies. I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about him. I watched his entire speech yesterday. I watched a president speak for approximately an hour. And you can call it dog whistling or you could say it's directly. He sent them to the nation's capital. He sent them over to the state capital. He talked about we're strong. We're not weak. Only the weak would stand for this. You can't let this happen. We're going to march over there before he got in his motorcade and went back to the White House. He did that. He's responsible. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Somebody's going to say it. I'm going to say it. The reality of the situation is I'm going strictly by the speech he gave to them minutes before they walked over to the state capitol. He sent them over there to cause disruption. And in that building, there were blacks, there were whites, there were young folks, there were older folks. There were folks working for the government. There were folks who were elected officials. The vice president of the United States was in danger. The speaker of the house was in danger. The majority leader of the Senate was in danger. And he knew that and did not care. Period. Now, when we talk about black people, let's be very clear about what we're saying is listen to my man, Joe Madison, the black Eagle this morning, along with various others, because he's on urban view, Sirius XM radio channel at one I love him. But he said it for me very, very appropriately. Doc Rivers said it. Steve Kerr said it. Stan Van Gundy said it. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum said it. These were black people. There would have been more than four people dead. And by the way, they wouldn't have gotten into the rotunda. We wouldn't have gotten into the rotunda. Breaking windows, penetrating the barriers, Police officers actually let them through the barriers. Now, for those who want to condemn them, clearly, whoever's running the police force in the, in the, in the nation's got whoever's responsible, rather, for capital security, they should be fired immediately. They should be fired. No question. We understand that. But understand also that those officers, those law enforcement officials actually in attendance, then number one priority was to protect the elected officials. So if you're protecting them and shielding them from harm, you can't do that and then also guard the barriers and prevent people from coming in. But there was a lack of preparation. I don't understand it. I don't understand how they got into the state capitol. Black people would have never gotten that far. We would have been mowed down. They would have shot us on sight. I would remind the nation that when protesters were out there months ago, and there were people threatening to penetrate the gates of the White House. I would remind people that the president of the United States the next day said, I'm so glad. He said, I'm actually, he didn't use the word disappointed, but he came across as disappointed that they didn't penetrate even deeper. He said, because my, so, my secret service guys, these young guys, they're, they're ready. They were great. He said, but man, if they had gotten penetrated, he said, I'd have felt sorry for those protesters because I had the most vicious attack dogs waiting for them. This is what he's done. One man who cared about himself more than his country. One man who cared about his power more than his country. One man who cared about himself, his power, his money, his prestige, whatever you want to call it, cared about that more than potentially the lives of human beings, some of whom have supported him lock, stock and barrel for the last four years. Whether you want to abhor it or celebrate it, no one has supported the president more than Vice President Pence. Very few, if anyone outside of him, has supported him more than Senator Mitch McConnell. And 
evidently that did not matter. And this is where we are. And as a result, as Kendrick Perkins said, and he alluded to Max, because I want to come back to you right now. I'm scared because there's still less than two weeks to go. You know, you can't get them out of office by that time. They talk in 25th Amendment. That will take at least eight days, if not longer. You're not getting him out. He's the president of the United States. Still got the nuclear codes, et cetera, et cetera. We don't know what this man is capable of, but we do know this. Because the NBA players said it and said it so eloquently. If that had been a black person, we wouldn't have even made it in the building. They had a shot us on sight. Think about this, guys. Slavery and everything that has followed years, decades, centuries of prejudice. All of this stuff's going on. And black people never did that. And look what we were subjected to. But the white folks march up on Capitol Hill, storm and breach the perimeter and storm the state capital and the nation's capital. And they walked out alive. They should be arrested. You got facial recognition, the FBI, everybody should be in on this. All of them, every one of them you could get. You get them and you make sure you give them real significant jail time. Floor is yours, Max. Go ahead. That was forcefully and eloquently stated, Stephen A., and I applaud you. Let me add to it this. When you say uh, the vice president and the leader of the Senate, the majority leader, um, have supported the president, in fact, they have enabled the president. The entire, that entire party has enabled the president. There was a chance to get rid of him when he was impeached. They looked the other way. There were comments saying he's learned his lesson. And, of course, anyone with a passing familiarity with history knew, in fact, that is appeasement and enabling behavior, and that, of course, it would come to something like this. This was not unpredictable. It was predictable. Perhaps the lack of preparedness on the part of law enforcement or incompetence or collusion, it's something, right? It's, at least you could say there was failure there, was surprising to many, but not the, the behavior. And, and incidentally, uh, Kendrick Perkins yep. is right. The behavior could get worse. It, it continued. There is no bottom, it seems. But, uh, but let me say this. The, the, the supporters have been lied to. Now, you can say shame on them for being that susceptible to those kind of lies. But they have been lied to. When Trump lost the caucus in Iowa to Senator uh, Ted Cruz, he said that it was a fraud and that you should either throw out the results or redo the election. Right? He, this is not the first time he said that. Baseless, factless, it's just made up. It's, it, it's imagined. It's lies. Um, and, and there are more lies now. It's thrown out of well, every court. We don't court. have to go too it's, deep it's, into that. It, you know, it, every you lawsuit. Go ahead. But, but the, point is, the, the, the point is, people are reacting to lies. And the question is, why? Why are they invested enough in the ideas well, that they are that susceptible to lies? And, and I yeah, would say, yeah. again, it comes back to... It comes back to the browning in several elections recently is that the white majority, which is still a majority, doesn't get its way. The, the, the elections okay. break down largely well, along racial lines. And okay. when they do get their way, they want to uphold elections. And when they don't, they want to overturn them. And, and incidentally, Stephen A., Go ahead, that power structure is what Hurry the up, NBA I players Go are ahead. referring to. Mm -hmm. Got it. Go well, ahead, well, Kendrick. Stephen a., Go ahead. I, I thought you brought Stephen A. I thought you brought up a great point, and 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 I actually tweeted this out yesterday to your point that I said at Donald Trump, this is your fault because if you go back and look at what happened after the election and after he found out that he lost, all he did was instigate the situation. So was I surprised that something happened? No, I wasn't surprised. I was surprised that it happened at this nature, but I, I was expecting. I said, you know, some, something is going to happen. It's going to get ugly because the way mm -hmm. that he instigated, the way that he kept going about saying, you know, the election was rigged, and I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but he didn't stop there. Even yesterday, 
when President now our, now our President Joe Biden when he said when he called out Donald Trump and said you need to address this situation that speech that you're talking yep. about he still instigated the situation okay. and like I said Stephen A I'm sitting here right now Max and I'm scared because I don't know what's next this was a planned attack well, we don't know what and we all need to be uh, listen we all need to be on our toes and we, heels without question without question we're living in some very shaky times right now there is no doubt about that we are a sports network there's a lot that we're going to get into this subject is not going anywhere we will continue to address this we've got the head coach ron rivera uh for the washington football team coming on in just a while you heard what i said and uh, to me it's not about politics for those of us watching espn it's not about politics it's about I'm a star, shining bright test in the darkest times I'm a star, twinkle twinkle, I bring the sparkle in, light your world up Yeah, 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 light your world up 